Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina. And I'm so glad that you have clicked on this video to watch. Before we get started on today's topic, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and like this video, share it with your family and your friends. I, y'all know I like to just hop in. Today's topic is kind of really tender because I, I spoke with my therapist today and when we were talking, she kind of was just like, I want to see how you are doing. And, and I just, you know, ended up telling her how I was doing and all the things. And she just literally went through her checklist and she was like, how's this? How's that? How's this? <laughs> and I would give her, you know, a detailed description of what is going on and how those different things were. So, um, I was just, she ended up like think talking about last week's session. Y'all, last week's session, I was frustrated. I was so upset because we, she ended up discovering that. So I've been, just to be transparent, I've been working on forgiveness therapy and just going through forgiving different people in my life and in different ways. And um, it's been really eye-opening and Things have come up that I just didn't know. But last week, I got upset because we discovered collectively that I have more healing to do and or more forgiving to do. And I was just like, man, this is a lie. Discovering that I had more work to do really, really upset me. But um, she was like, you know, kind of like, you know, be cool with yourself. Be patient with yourself because you are putting in a big investment into yourself. And when she said that, it reminded me that at the beginning of the year, the Lord told me that he wanted me to invest and I always just thought it was financially, but whenever we talked and she said that me investing into forgiving and healing, it just put things into a completely different perspective. And I was like, God, you are so cool. Like you knew all this, all these things were just gonna happen, that I was gonna have to go through this um, because her and I didn't really like go into that per se, like talking about um, forgiveness therapy at the beginning of the year. It kind of like happened toward the middle of January. With forgiveness therapy, it is draining. It's emotionally draining because you're literally having to consciously say that I forgive this person for doing this and it's you're not going to be having this conversation with that person unless like of course you are you have something some other kind of different conversation but it usually won't you you won't you'll be forgiving the person without like talking to them about it. And so that's emotionally draining and exhausting. And I love the fact that she said that it was, but I found also too that investing in therapy and healing with the Lord is costly. There are things that you have to give up to live in freedom. We don't realize how much unforgiving people 
not being healed, not going to therapy, whatever way you're, you find your healing, I don't think that we realize the cost that comes with not having your healing and not being intentional about life and the decisions that we make also comes at a cost. Being passive can only get you so far. Um, we have to decide how we want our lives to be. We can't just let life happen to us and think that things that things will just happen like, oh, somebody's just gonna bless me with this car. You know, like, or I'm just gonna get this business. Like, no, you have to go and get your business. You have to go and get your car. You have to live an intentional life. You have to make investments so that when you put something in, that you, you have something to receive. You have, you know, you yield a return on your investment. Being on this healing journey has like forever changed me. I'm I'm never going to be the same. Um just the way that I no longer want to one of the things also too that, you know, we talked about today in therapy was just I don't want to chase people down. I don't care who you are. But I don't want to chase you down. Chase you down. Um, that I've done it for too long, and I just I'm free from that. I'm free. I'm free in the name of Jesus, and I don't want to ever put pick that yoke back up. Um, and also too, um, today I had gone to talk to some people, and. Um, they pretty much rejected me in a way because it was like I was walking up to this office to talk to them and this woman was like do you see like all these cars out here we are in meetings and stuff like that and I was just like okay and I just walked off Usually, I would have taken on that rejected spirit and just been kind of down and out. But I realized that that woman being rude to me was a major blessing. And I'm like, woman, I wouldn't want to deal with you. I, I, I don't. And that you have to have a level of peace to not, you know, bring yourself down and allow yourself to get down by the way people talk to you like and I was like you know what I'm not gonna say anything rude back to you because you're not worth it you're not worth it for me to brace up my blood pressure you're not worth it so I said I chose my peace so yeah so every day I am doing my best to become free, like every day. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Why am I going to try to chase you? Why am I going to try to please you? Look at this other scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. I face death every day, yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. I would have formally been down on myself about everything that's going on in my life right now. Um, I have a lot going on in my life right now. And 
things can be really exhausting and heavy, but I am looking to the Lord constantly and consistently. There's times, of course, where I cry because the weight of it all gets heavy. And then after that cry, I lift it back over to him. And I continue to have to go through laying my laying my burden. To go to therapy or even a healing program that's godly is transformational because you are relying on the Holy Spirit in a new way. You get to be free because of the things that you lay down. In this life, we get to kill off things to look more like Christ. We get to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Don't you want to have a renewed mind? Isn't it victory in Christ to just say, God, you got this. You literally got this. You got all of these relationships that I have. You have my marriage, you have my son, and you are the one that's helping me to show up in those relationships and, you know, with value and importance. Um, and when people th do things to you that you don't like and that's wrong, you are able to use that freedom muscle that the Lord has given you to be able to just let it roll off the shoulder. Respond how you need to respond. Don't neglect that, you know, it has, they that someone has done something hurtful to you. They, they have. You acknowledge it and you say, you know what? I forgive them. And you move on. It's sometimes way harder than that. But whatever that situation may be, do it with the Lord. He's going to have you. He has you. So making this vestment is not only for me. It's for my son. It's for my husband. Because I get to better be, I get to be a better Gina. I get to be a better wife, a better mom, a better friend, and a better, you know, extended family member. I get to be better in my relationships because I'm making this investment in my healing and in myself. And once I am able to be healed, I literally get to be my best self. And so I love that. And then I get to show my son a free mom, a mom who's walking in freedom. And I get to pass down to him how to be free in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I don't want to pass down codependency, people pleasing, and a sense of rejection. Because those are the things that I have faced and I have, you know, lived through and acted on. I don't want to pass that down to him. I want my son to be free. I want him to know that he's loved by Christ. I want him to know and understand that the only one that he can really, really depend on is Jesus and Jesus alone. I want him to know and learn that the Bible says it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans, which is in Psalm 118, 18. He's not rejected. His mom and dad won't reject him. And even if we do in some way, somehow, that we may not even notice, he'll know 1 Peter 2, 9, which says, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Receiving healing impacts the generations just like curses. And we get to 
have the opportunity to be chain breakers. We get to have the opportunity to show our children something different. Um, it's a gift. The time that we are born was literally in God's plan. He makes no mistakes in when we're born, um, in the family we're raised in, in the way we teach our children. He makes no mistakes. And one of the things that I've been thinking about lately is, is that um, I, I saw on Instagram that uh, Lisa Bevere had a video talking about how God made you to be your child's mom as you are a mom. And God put that child in your life specifically, specifically for you and for your family. Um, and you're going to know how to take care of your child. And it's easy to believe the lies that, you know, that, oh, this, I'm not doing a good job. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. And we may think that our child needs certain things and they don't even at the end of the day. They just need you to be there. Every child just wants you to be there. You don't have to have the house clean, up and down, the walls clean. You don't have to have all these different things that we think that our child needs. They just want to be with us. They want to be loved. They want to be accepted. They want to feel like you have chosen them. They want to be every you know, fruitful thing that God has created them. Like it was, God has always designed us. We, we look as humans, we look for acceptance. We look for acceptance. And so this is why healing therapy in a godly way is worth the investment. You don't have to go to uh, therapy. If you were to decide and you're not in therapy, whatever it may be, you don't have to go to therapy Therapy every month. You don't have to go every week. You go at your own pace. There's no pressure to be there. There's no pressure to show up. Um, I remember even my pastor said that he currently, I think, sees his therapist maybe once or twice a year. And I think that that's for certain seasons of our life. Like right now, I see my therapist every week because of the intense therapy that we're going through. And so, um, and then there was a time to where I would see her maybe once a month. And then there was even also a time to where I would see her like twice a month. So, but she's also a Christian therapist. Um, and as believers, I have, I mean, I would strongly recommend us to be with other believers in this field because when we're not in therapy with a believer, it gets really different and strange and the belief systems kind of like clash and so I have personally, like when I first became a believer, I um, went to, on, on my college campus, I just went to the therapy therapist that they had there. And there were so many like spiritual conflicts, I remember, like, just like, Mm, I don't think I would think of it that way because Jesus, you know, like stuff like that, like, you know, so um, I just wanted to share how we can get help for the things that we have faced and we don't have to live in bondage. And I believe uh, therapy is a great resource and tool 
um, and even their healing programs through different churches or even just um, maybe like a Christian program of healing. Um, I've also heard of in, you know, different places. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. There are also resources out there um, depending upon where you do decide to get your therapy from. There are great resources, even financial resources that helps with therapy. Um, what is it called? insurance helps with therapy and also too like another um, caveat or suggestion I do want to make is is that you may not necessarily like the first person that you may do therapy with they may not necessarily be the person you like so also too you have to take your time to fig fill out people figure out who you like um, I've had a few different therapists throughout different seasons of my life to where I was just like, no, that's not the right one. And I would just wait um, and just continue my search and I, I wouldn't give up. I hope that in all of this that God will show you something. We all just need to be encouraged to chase after peace, chase after our healing. So healing therapy. It is worth it because you want to put that investment in yourself to know yourself, to learn yourself, to love yourself in a new way. And you also want to put that investment in for your future and the generations to come and also for your marriage. Y'all, my marriage, I feel like is a lot better because I have been like my brain is just being like the mind of Christ. And so I just want to encourage you. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if y'all are in therapy and um, how do you like being in therapy? And let me know if you've ever been in healing programs. Put some comments below. Let me know. And again, please like this video, share it with your friends and family. I hope that this blesses and encourages you. Hey y'all, can you believe that it's been about four years since I started this channel? God gave me a vision to just share the gospel and share different testimonies that he um, was just doing in my life. And so now this ministry is growing and God is um, increasing the capacity of what happens on this channel and even um, just calling me out to do more things to get women free and to, um, to share the gospel more. And, um, so I wanted to let you know that you can partner with me. I'm going to be leaving links below. Check those links out to partner with me. And also if your church organization ministry would like to have a speaker, or even if it's a nonprofit organization, please go ahead, go to my website, reginainsola.com. On that website, you'll be able to click the speaking tab and inquire, fill out that form. I'd love to work with you. Thank you so much for supporting me during this time and for previously supporting me all these four years.